please let me share with you one fantastic game it's really amazing and not only that we have a lot of uh, sacrifices during the game we have morphe with white pieces and he started the game with uh, e4 and freeman with black replied with e5 bishop c4 do you know the name of that opening and the name is bishop's opening <laughs> because white just developed the bishop and black replied bishop to c5 and here i'd like to mention little more things about the game because this game was a blindfold game that means that uh, the player the white player the morphe didn't see the game didn't see the the board he had something in his eyes he had closed his eyes and he tried to remember all of the moves this is really amazing did you ever play a game like that it's very very difficult and not only that he played with uh, other players uh, approximately eight players and he managed to win six of that games six games blindfold without see the board it's really amazing he managed to draw one of them and lose one okay so we have b4 here it's very similar to to evans gambit white would like to sacrifice the pawn this pawn on b4 in order to distract this bishop from c5 and for example after bishop takes we can play c3 and here and d4 you can see white is preparing to attack in the center and gain more space there this is the idea behind the evans gambit uh, here b5 and by the way gambit means that white is sacrificing a pawn like that that this ball this b2 this b4 pawn in order to take some other elements some other initiatives in the position so here black didn't accept the sacrifice he played back bishop to b6 knight f3 d6 tried to develop his pieces normally and morphe continue very aggressively in the center he played d4 tried to attack everything now we have e takes d4 knight takes knight to f6 everything looks normal the knight uh, is attacking this e4 pawn so we have knight to c3 here try to protect the pawn and uh, morphe's opponent here start the fireworks and he played actually he played short castling short castling and now he starts the fireworks he played knight takes e4 wow he's sacrificing the knight but he had an idea after knight takes e4 he played d5 and you can see now that the bishop and the knight is under attack so he would like to attack both of that pieces in order to take one back and morphe played this very smart very clever move bishop to g5 attacking the queen so the queen has to retreat he played queen e8 and now morphe captures bishop takes d5 very nice move and as you can see he managed to save all of his pieces and now everything is protected but his opponent played the move c6 and now the bishop is under attack here and if the bishop just uh, removed, go back on uh, b3, you can see that the knight on e4 is hanging. This was black's idea and this is wh what black is uh, hoping for, to sacrifice temporarily a piece and after that gain, gain it uh, back. But here Morphe found, uh, uh, actually, you can pause the window, you have uh, two ideas here, two, two very strong moves, at least two strong moves. What are you going to play with white? white during the game played rook e1 if you manage to find that move congratulations you are playing like paul morphy very very nice and uh, she can play knight to d6 this is the best move actually because we are attacking the queen black of course can reply queen to e5 and uh, as you can see now it's a really really amazing position because the bishop is under attack on g5 the bishop on d5 is under attack by queen and pawn and similarly the knight is under attack on d6 but uh, it's white's turn and for that reason black cannot capture any of that of that pieces and here white can capture on f7 sacrificing the bishop here and for example after king to f8 white is just in time to protect everything every every white piece is protected right now right it's really amazing but we have another variation after bishop takes f7 of course black can capture with the rook rook takes f7 and uh, then white uh, have really better position because he can capture the rook the rook is more valuable piece comparing to knight or bishop and uh, after queen takes uh, after king takes here for example we can play queen h5 this is a check and now black has uh, uh, problems here for example if he goes uh, uh, on g8 then we can join the attack the rook can join the attack you can see the the queen is under attack he would like to uh, checkmate on e8 for example this is an illustrative variation and you can see white mana to checkmate now the king cannot escape here because the queen is protecting that square 
and uh, let's go back he played uh, he didn't play knight d6 all right it was very nice move obviously he might uh, think about that and players uh, we are able to find the strongest moves but during the game it's very difficult to play them because we might not see the complete continuation we might afraid something we might confuse something it's normal but okay he played another very logical move he played uh, rook e1 and uh, you can see now he played this is the game continuation he played queen to d7 obviously because after c takes d5 here white is winning again he can give this check on d6 as you can see the king is under attack thanks to the knight and the rook is attacking the queen so uh, white is winning material for that reason he played queen to d7 again attacking that pawn on uh, on d5 and if just the bishop moves away then he can capture the, the knight on d6 this is the idea because this knight on on d4 sorry because the knight on d4 is not very well protected and now Morphy played this amazing move knight f6 he should sacrifice something and for that reason he tried to sacrifice it in the best way he sacrificed it on f6 this is a check double attack as well because the king and queen are under attack we have now pawn takes on g6 and now bishop takes and you can see now again black is facing a lot of problems because this bishop is amazing piece extremely powerful piece and white only needs a check maybe something like that i don't know maybe like queen h5 and queen g5 you can see the king doesn't have a lot of uh, movements a lot of available movements and here black actually cannot capture the the second piece he captured one piece here this is a piece sacrifice a check he captured one piece here and after bishop takes morphe is sacrificing another piece here the bishop on d5 but unfortunately black cannot capture that bishop because white can play rook e5 the queen is under attack the queen can capture the knight for example and next after that we have a checkmate in one move queen, rook g5 this is a checkmate the king cannot go anywhere so let's move uh, back he played queen to d6 and then again you can see a lot a lot of pieces are under attack this bishop is under attack on f6 this bishop on d5 is under attack and of course this knight on d4 is not very well protected and also we should mention the pawn on b4 that uh, is under attack as well and uh, morphe here found uh, another brilliant way to continue the game amazing game he played the amazing move knight e6 what a move the idea behind that move of course is to close this diagonal the, the bishop is not is no longer protected protect this uh, g5 g4 square and then we can give a check on g4 and of course this is a checkmate because the king cannot go anywhere this is the idea behind it so he captured with the, the bishop he cannot capture with the pawn of course because this is a check and after that we have an, um, another check here the king can go uh, there but then we can capture on e6 you can see everything is under attack here and this attack is crashing black cannot do uh, anything here for example after that we can play rook a d1 very important move attacking the queen the queen cannot go anywhere because the queen should protect the bishop the queen should protect the g7 square we're attacking a checkmate here and you can see this is totally winning for white and uh, for that reason he didn't capture with the pawn he captured with the bishop in order to protect this g4 square and now we have uh, actually paul morphy here didn't play the best move but we are humans please also remember that this was a blindfold game so for that reason it was extremely difficult to remember every single position of, of the piece to remember and calculate uh, variations uh, the correct move order ahead it was very difficult and he played the normal looking move queen h5 but actually it's uh, a mistake a better move here is queen to d2 with the obvious idea to put the queen on, a c on uh, h6 and checkmate let's examine the game here black can capture on uh, f2 very nice idea try to distract white queen but uh, here king can goes on h1 continue with the idea to uh, checkmate in this way queen f6 queen d7 of course he can play bishop to h4 black is trying to sacrifice back some material in order to liberate his position this is the idea this is the reason behind this crazy looking move bishop h4 and now we have a queen h6 you can see it's a very straightforward he's going to checkmate here and black and capture on f6 and i'm not blaming uh, 
Morphe that he didn't found this continuation. It's very difficult to foresee all of these moves, but now we have an amazing idea to continue the game. What are you going to do now with white? It's white's turn. This is a very nice typical pattern and he can play bishop to e4. Very difficult to spot it if you didn't see it before. Very difficult because again he's threatening the straightforward checkmate on h7. So rook d8 is the only move. Bishop takes, king h8, bishop f5, rook g8. And now we have another amazing move, another strong move. Bishop uh, rook takes on e6. Very, very difficult to foresee that move as well because after, rook, after f takes e6, we can give this check and of course we are entertaining the game, right? The continuations, the beauty that could uh, uh, happen during a chess game. This is why I'm showing you this variation. So king here, for example, another check, king e7, another check with the queen. The only move is bishop to uh, g7 and now we have epaulets mate, this one, queen g7. If you don't know what the checkmate is it and if you like to learn everything about the checkmate, everything, absolutely everything, you can follow my website, I have a course there and uh, you can um, study it, you can send me a message if you are interested about that. So let's go back and here we have uh, queen h5, this is the move, he played that move and he could play queen f4, this is the idea behind it, queen is extremely active now, the queen is attacking f2, the queen is stopping this maneuver, the queen is attacking the, uh, the, the bishop on f6 and as you can see the queen is not only a powerful attacking unit but we can consider here as uh, a very valuable and important defensive uh, uh, piece. You should uh, keep her on uh, defense and she can protect yourself. So he played this move here to king uh, f1. This is a mistake actually. He give back the favor. So white have the initiative again. We have king h1, queen f4 right now. But right now it's a little late because white just sacrificed the rook again. And uh, you can see that uh, he can capture here. But after that we have bishop takes. The only move is rook f7 and now another checkmate. And again you can see after this uh, that the rook is under attack. The rook is hanging theoretically. The bishop is hanging. The bishop here on f6 is not very well protected and all, almost all of uh, white pieces are shaking, right? It's not very stable. But uh, this is uh, the initiative in chess. This is the tempo. This is how to keep the threats, how to keep the game flowing, right? This is very important. And now he played uh, knight to d7, tried to finally to develop uh, his piece. And again, three pieces are under attack. The bishop is under attack. The rook is under attack theoretically and the bishop on d5 as well. <laughs> so a lot of uh, threats and here white uh, can play bishop g5, a very strong move. Or he played the bishop b2, another strong and logical move. All right. And here, of course, if he captures like this, we can capture with a bishop. The rook should go here. Rook f1, you can see we have a lot of pressure, a lot of pins. We have a pin here on f2. The queen is behind it. We have another deadly pin here on f7. We have there the bishop and queen. So black has a lot of pressure. And similarly, this knight is not very well protected. And um, black is uh, not losing. But it's very difficult to play with the black pieces. He should find the only, only moves. Actually, here white is threatening something. Let's play a crazy move like that. And uh, I was wondering if he's just threatening this. Because after queen, I'm trying to give a check here and checkmate somehow. But okay, it's not, it's not good what I'm thinking. Because he has a defense. Actually, he has a lot of... A lot of uh, attack here, right? He, he can play something like that. Bishop c1, you can see the queen is under attack. The bishop can join the attack again. It's, it's very difficult to play with the black pieces. Let's put it in this way. So, bishop d4, he continued the game like that. g3, right now attacking the queen, try to distract this queen in order to capture the bishop. This is the idea. Actually, here it's very important to notice that this bishop is hanging, but... Uh, it's protecting the king in, in this long diagonal. He can, she cannot give any checks. Knight to f6. She captures the queen here. Knight takes. And uh, you can relax here and say, Oof, all right. The queen is out of the board, around of the board. So I might relax. And uh, here he captured on uh, d4. And the problem for black is that he cannot capture either the rook or the bishop. For example, if he captures here, then we have a check on g1. 
the knight is the only move, rook takes, king will go somewhere and now rook h6, she can try to put this pawn on f6, try to block the diagonal a1, h8, this is the idea, but here we have a checkmate. This is uh, one variation, another variation is to capture the rook again, but we have something similar, this is a check, the, the rook should go in front here, then we have another check on g1, the only move looks uh, this one, then we can capture the rook, you can see the rook on f7 is pinned, it, can, it cannot move, this bishop is helping the rook to give a check, he can go there, but we can capture another rook, we have uh, two bishops up and you can see the position is clearly winning, right? Can you win it? I hope so. And uh, now he didn't capture rook or bishop, he played knight takes f4, a logical move because a lot of white pieces are hanging again. So white gives that check, very important check, and knight to g6. I, I think that uh, Friedman with the black pieces could feel uh, relaxed right now because uh, alright, he exchanged the queens, he managed to exchange some pieces, the rook is under attack, the bishop is under attack, so white should go back, right? This is the logical thinking, but now it's white's turn. You have the opportunity to find a very nice move as Paul Morphy. Can you do it? Can you pause the video and try, the, try to find the best move for white here? And white have a very nice move because um, this bishop is pinning that f7 square and he managed to find the best move here. He played rook e takes f6, another amazing move. The pawn of course cannot take here because the bishop pinned that pawn. She can capture with the other pawn, with the other pawn but we have rook takes g6 check, king f7, rook g7 check, king h6. What else to do? He cannot really go here because uh, after that we have rook takes f with a check. This is a check. King can, can go here and then we have another check, he should go here and now something like uh, rook e7 for example and he should put the rook in front and then we can checkmate, right? This is another beautiful, beautiful checkmate, isn't it? And for that reason, he, after this he went on h7, another check and he didn't went uh, on h8, he moved forward on f6, bishop d4 with uh, a lot of deadly threats here, black, white is threatening something like that to checkmate um, this and after that you can checkmate with uh, the rook on uh, h7. So here uh, black played this move f5, try to do something about that bishops and now we have bishop to b3, b6, rook g3 and rook f7, bishop e5 and these bishops are better pieces compared to the rook, you should prefer the bishops here, they are coordinated each other, they are controlling a lot of squares, they can um, coordinate with the rook, create a mating threat and we have rook e8, another check here, king f7, rook g5, continue the attack, attacking the pawn on uh, f5 as you can see, we have a check here and rook g7, try finally to exchange the rooks, but this is this cost a pawn. We have bishop takes, king h8, h4. Unfortunately, white here cannot pin the rook. It will be a nice move, but this move, this rook from e1, stopping this bishop from uh, bishop to e5. So we have uh, h4, exchanges here, rook e8, king f3, and the position is uh, winning easily because white can start pushing his pawns forward, very forward, to h7, then he can give a check here, for example, and he can win the game. And please also notice that uh, the king or the bishops can jump in the other side of the board and capture some material. So, Morphis, Paul's Morphis opponent resigned here. It's a beautiful game, isn't it? We have a lot of excitements here, a lot of uh, good opportunities for thinking. The first one is uh, when black start uh, capturing material like that, knight takes e4, and we have this a double attack here. And now after this uh, you see a lot of pieces are hanging but uh, Morphe managed to sacrifice another piece to create uh, the attack really really nice. We have some beautiful uh, uh, checkmates as we've seen and uh, here we have rook takes e6, another sacrifice right to open up the position. Do you remember another cool sacrifice? And finally uh, more close to the final is this one rook, rook e takes d6 and he created a very strong attack and the two bishops managed to win that game. I hope you enjoyed it, you are very welcome to post some uh, comments below, to ask me something if you like, if you didn't understand something, if I missed uh, any variation, because it's easy to miss something when you are talking, 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 and 
Thank you very much and see you soon.